This week, the Prime Minister gave an interview to the Today Show in which his attitude towards home ownership was on full display. He was asked by host Ali Langdon on Wednesday why the budget was being touted as a cost-of-living budget that would help all Australians, despite not including anything to help people struggling to keep up with rising rent prices. Well, what's the government going to do? I mean, this is the thing. Everyone in Australia thinks the government should come to the rescue. This is the fundamental problem here. And the issue is that any time they come to the rescue, they just intervene in the market more and it drives up the cost of housing. Okay? Even these home loan guarantees are going to drive up the cost of housing. The best way to support people who are renting a house is to help them buy a house. He replied, before explaining how his government has helped more than 300,000 people into their first home. It doesn't seem to cross his mind that one of the main reasons people can't afford their own home is because almost all of their money goes towards rent and the skyrocketing cost of living. Well, Rachel did our monthly shop yesterday and one trolley from Aldi was $750. Now, mind you, we, we don't buy any filler. We don't eat carbohydrates. So there's, you know, everything we buy costs a lot more. That's the problem, trying to save money on a carnivore diet. If you just buy some, you know, 20 kilo bag of rice, you can really pad out a lot of food. Lettuce now costs $5.50. Filling up your car costs almost 100 It's over 100 But we're not seeing an increase in wages. Okay, well, we're not going to. Because how many jobs can be done overseas? If you want an increase in wage, don't go prattling to the government. They're not going to give it to you. You need to upskill or you need to change jobs. You need to ask for a wage, wage increase. So, and if, if you're in a career where other people are controlling your wages, well, maybe it's time to change careers. You can, that's the hard reality of it. And even the author of this article we're reading right now traveled to the other side of the world because they couldn't get a job in their home country. They, so, that, that's, it's up to the individual in some regards. We need to get out of this mentality that it's always the government's bloody problem. They're not going to fix it. All the Labor's promises of this, 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 and the other, they're not costed. It's just going to drive up tax. It's going to stuff up our cost of living even more. Imagine if we had completely renewable power generation, how expensive our electricity would be. Just look at Europe, guys. That's your future if you vote for leftists. So, a predicted interest rate rise will also have a flow-on effect to renters who will undoubtedly be forced to pay more once their landlord's repayments increase. Well... That's, that's the issue. That's why the PM wants people to buy a house. So you're not paying rent. But to really address it, you need to increase supply. You need to be making it cheaper to build houses. You need to reduce the power of the not-in-my-backyard crowd. You've got green politicians bitching and moaning about housing affordability, and then they're stepping in and stopping low-cost housing for political purposes. So the Prime Minister's solution, just buy a house, you bunch of Muppets. He later claimed the quote was taken out of context and he was merely talking about how the government is helping people buy their own home. I mean, here's the thing. You're always going to take advantage of anything that pushes for self-improvement that a politician is saying and look at it in an unpleasant light. But if you looked at the policies he's talking about and that were expanded upon in his week's budget, you'll see they are not even a Band-Aid solution. In fact, experts believe they will just make the products work problems even worse the flagship policy that will affect most of trains looking to buy a first home is the first home guarantee which will be expanded to 50,000 places a year for the next three years this means tens of thousands more aspiring homeowners will be able to buy a property without having to save a 20 percent deposit instead they will have be able to buy a home with just a deposit worth five percent of the property's value single parents can buy with even smaller amounts of savings they will need just a tiny two percent deposit if they are lucky enough to get on the government's expanded family home guarantee. Well, here's the thing. You do that, you buy a property, you get in with a low rate, then you're not fighting interest. You're earning nothing on your interest for your saving while property continues to rise. It's beating inflation. In other words, the government's solution to an overinflated property market that is quick, uh, quite clearly being driven up by excessive demand and a shortfall in supply is to encourage low-income earners to settle themselves with even larger amounts of debt. Uh, I don't know if we're talking about low-income earners. We're just talking about people who can't save a deposit. And 
Often that's people who aren't on low income. This appears to be an almost irresponsible move considering we're facing interest rate rises. People with higher levels of debt, for example, those who bought their homes with a ridiculous low 5% deposit, could be crippled by even the smallest increases. Look at these images here. No backyards. Oh, you got a backyard here. Nothing here. Nothing. Yeah, tiny one there, but this, but still people want it. Anyway, top it all off, experts say that giving people extra money to buy a home just makes all houses more expensive while failing to address structural issues such as building the half a million homes needed to meet the chronic shortage of supply in the country. Well, you're going to struggle even doing it now with building materials being in short supply. In other words, it's doing exactly the opposite of what is needed to help the vast majority of people looking to buy their first home. RMIT's university's emeritus professor of environment and planning, Michael Buxton, said that when buyers have a larger budget to spend, they can bring forward purchases that would have eventually happened anyway, while leaving behind those for whom home ownership has slipped out of reach. Every time the government announces assistance packages for home buyers, it just goes on to the price of housing because developers simply rise the price of the house and land packages they're sa- selling, he told Sunday, uh, the Sydney Morning Herald. All these home buyer grants do is stimulate demand, which increases pressure on the supply of houses and prices of housing products. Governments know this, but they get a free kick just before the election, so they keep on making the same mistakes and adding significantly to the price of housing in the long term. So instead of coming up with a plan to build more homes or a real incentive to give first home buyers a level playing field against greedy investors, greedy investors looking for their third or fourth rental home, The government is encouraging people to take on ridiculous levels of debt at a time of major economic uncertainty and artificially inflated, inflating the prices of home even further. All this does is to increase the divide between those who can't get a foot in the door and those who have amassed a portfolio of properties to bolster their wealth. It's a mindset that pushes Australia towards a state where people who are born into disadvantage stay there and those who have the keys to the castle have bolted the door. That's something I thought Australia was better than. Well... I think Ben's getting a bit of a reality check here about Australia, to be brutally honest. You know, I think he's just, he immigrated to Australia just when times were good. Now we're facing our first recession. Let's, let's have a talk about this. I think that's what it is. You've got someone who's never been through an Australian recession before. That's what we're seeing here. I mean, none of this is a surprise. The government throws money at housing every single chance it can get. Every time there's economic issues, it stimulates the housing market. It's what they do. And it'll drive up the cost of housing. What can you do? What housing policies have Labor promised? They're exactly the same as the Liberal government. There's no difference. They've gotten rid of negative gearing. They've gotten rid of uh, addressing the the issues with uh, fringe benefit... uh, No, not fringe benefit tax. uh, Franking credits. So Labor wants to double tax you. Just remember that. Okay, If if you're outraged over people getting franking credits, look into it a bit more. Labor wants to double tax people. Bullshit. Utter bullshit. So what would I suggest? Well, we need to increase housing supply. Government needs to step out of the way. We need to vote in politicians and political parties who aspire for smaller government and less intervention in the market. That's not going to be a one-election thing. This is going to be a multi-generational issue. I don't know if it'll change in our lifetimes. What do you reckon? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. If you want to help out the channel, there's a few ways you can. Join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake or use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I will see you all at the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now. Million buck houses. The Australian dream, eh? It's long dead.